come before you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Good morning. I'm proud of you. You made it out. It's all right. I think uh, it may, I don't know for sure, but it might just be that the Green Bay Packers landed. But I digress. We've got a fantastic set of readings on this, the second Sunday of Epiphany. If I was trying to pinpoint the theme... I might say, what does the voice of God sound like? What does the voice of God sound like? Now, in fact, if you read the psalm, the psalm makes explicit that that God knows our voice, our movement, our words before they ever come out of our mouths. God knows our coming and going. The psalm, even uh, at the end, kind of concludes in in these verses, it says, How deep I find your thoughts, O God, how great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand, and to count them, my lifespan would need to be like yours. And I would suggest to you that perhaps the same is true in the number or quantity of the ways that God can speak to us, the number of voices that God can embody to guide us, direct us, number of voices that God can take on exceeds our imagination. Part of the reason I suggest this to you is I believe that it's not uncommon for God to use the voice of our loved ones. Sometimes even as we watch their lips move, it's God speaking through them, guiding us towards the love and grace and mercy of God or sometimes even giving us difficult directives, because who better to encourage us in a difficult thing than someone we know and love and trust? In fact, I think we see this play out in the passage from 1 Samuel. When Samuel, laying there in the temple, hears the voice of God, he doesn't think that's God calling. He thinks, oh, Eli needs me. And he runs and he asks Eli, he says, what do you need? And Eli says, I don't need anything, go back to bed. The voice of God is persistent. We know this to be true. The voice of God comes again. And this time, if, I don't know if you noticed, the first time he just says, hey, I'm here. The second time he says, I'm here because you called me. Right? Now, I don't know about you. I've heard a uh, voice of my beloved from the next room and then gone in there and she said, I didn't say anything. That ever happened to you? Yeah? All, all the husbands said Amen. It could go both ways. I mean, this is uh, certainly the case where we hear. And in fact, I'll say I've heard God speak through many of the people I love in life. And often when they're standing right in front of me, but I've heard the voice of uh, my grandfather even after he was dead so clearly that I was sure he was in the room with me, right? So there's this notion that God uses voices that are familiar and it plays out because after a while, Eli, Eli, I mean, give the guy a break. He was half asleep. That's probably why it took him three times to realize. But, I mean, Samuel just keeps coming back. He says, go back. He maybe just wanted to be left alone. He says, just stay there next time and say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. But Eli knows it's God, I think, because what happens the next morning kind of confirms it, right? The next morning he goes and he speaks with Samuel. He says, tell me what he said, what God said. And don't hold anything back. Boy, I would have to think Samuel's heart broke just a little bit as he began to imagine sharing what God had said with Eli. And maybe we have been the bearers of difficult news that we knew needed to be shared and can relate to Samuel in that. Maybe we've been Eli in some of those situations, receiving it, and just knowing through, though, through the voice of another that it is God sharing this difficult thing. Think, often when we think of the voice of God, we relate maybe a little better to Nathaniel in the gospel this morning. Now, 
Messiah is standing right in front of him, and he's still a little reluctant to believe it. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? This is a, probably a kind of phrase that we use throughout time, uh, throughout all history even. I mean, it's not always Nazareth that gets picked on. In, in a small town where I grew up, Toma, we'd say, could anything good come out of Sparta? And they were next door, and we didn't really think they were that hot, you know? Uh, and so we might, you know, I'm sure someone around here has said, has anything good come out of Houston? Or maybe, can anything good come out of Austin? Barbecue, I mean, but... Um, I digress. Now, Nathaniel, Nathaniel has the Messiah standing before him, and he's doubtful. And, and I think there's something to be, uh, it, it may be affirmed in like, we have to, yes, question at times, is it the voice of God? We need some discernment in whether it's the voice of God or the Messiah that's leading us. And we need to have some test marks or some benchmarks. And, and he's easily won over. I mean, Jesus shares a simple thing with him that only someone like God God could know, you know, this, this thing, and, and suddenly Nathaniel's changed, and he says, you're going to see far greater things than these. And that as the gospel unfolds, the voice of God is still questioned, and those who believe that Jesus is the Messiah become only more bold in their response to it. And I believe the same is true from us as we progress in our faith and endeavor to lean in to hear God's voice more clearly, whether it comes through the words of the beloved or through a burning bush in the wilderness, when we believe it to be the voice of God, we become more and more bold in our actions in response to what we feel God calling us towards. And that's where we find this passage from Corinthians. Now, there were some who were skeptical to believe I'd preach on it because it gets a little difficult and dicey in the middle. I won't reread the whole thing to you. Well, maybe I will. The premise here, though, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. This is an important thing for us to contemplate. And this, I think, is the why it's so important to contemplate what God's voice sounds like. We talked about what God's voice sounds like and all the multitude of ways it can come to us. I think we also need to think about why it's important to be able to recognize or discern God's voice. And it has to do with this. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law or do away with the law, but he did push against it at places. He, he broke the Sabbath. But indeed, if we read the whole of the law, we see that there are circumstances under which the Sabbath is to be broken. If we were to go... Old Testament, with the example, we'd say if your ox is stuck in a ditch, you need to you know, actually break the Sabbath. You don't want your beast of burden to un suffer unnecessarily, nor uh, endure any further injury while in the ditch. So you break the Sabbath in order to extract the ox. So all things are lawful. You can work on the Sabbath. It's lawful to do so. We can break some of these rules, but it's always a but. All things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. The voice of God is essential in discerning what things are most beneficial in life. And so, our calling, this epiphany, is to refine our capacity to discern God's voice in all the multitude of forms that it can take. May we find in our scriptures and prayers an encouragement from God's very voice. May we hear God's voice as we sing hymns of praise together. May we be reminded of the comfort of God's voice as we gather around this altar for the sacraments. May we be attuned to God's voice even when it bears a difficult message for us, one that we feel unprepared to hear and continue to discern together a path forward that is good and holy. God's truth comes in a multitude of voices, but it is our work. The faithful, the baptized, those who've dedicated themselves to the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus to continue to discern 
not just what is lawful. All things are lawful. But what is beneficial? May God guide us in our discernment, in our seeking, and in our following of Christ's way in all things. Amen.